It's Sunday, February 14th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome comes on live the Bear Podcast. We've been through a length episode number uh, uh, 590. And uh, this is really kind of a strange episode considering it's Valentine's Day. And we currently oh, have Paul Lanneron from Haunters Against Hate. Hello. Well, everybody say love, so Haunters Against Hate. Like, they, that's part of their thing. Well, love. there's also a movie called My Bloody Valentine. I mean, oh, there's that, go. too. I mean, we, we could, we could, we, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a Valentine's Day massacre of some kind as well, like, in history, <laughs> I'm sure. So, it's apropos. There we go. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, because, you know, Valentine's Day, I sacrifice live chickens anyway. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Huh? Burn black candles and sacrifice live chickens. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, of course, what's really scary is for us all, all of us single people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's why I thought it would be helpful to bring on and have a topic that isn't focusing on the fact that it's VD and everyone should be celebrating it. Today is venereal and... disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll go watch a happy movie like Requiem for a Dream or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort Whoa, of a happy boy. Film. Anyways, <laughs> a, a real picker upper. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways, um, Paul, we had talked, uh, we've chatted uh, since you were on last time uh, a while ago about some different things. And we thought we'd like do an update on um, how Hunters Against Hate is doing and specifically some big news that has happened since then and is uh, going to be occurring soon. But to uh, recap, if you don't mind real quickly, the kind of the encapsulate what Hunters Against Hate is, like kind of how it came about, because we probably have new folks that don't uh, know about you yet. Hunters Against Hate was formed right after the Orlando Pulse Massacre, um, mm -hmm. when a review team out of Ohio made some very disparaging remarks on social media about that they should have killed more fags. Mm -hmm. And a coalition of haunts got together to ban this group from coming to their haunts anymore and pretty much became Haunters Against Hate. And I ran with it. I created the logo, the tagline. I took it over because, you know, these haunt owners are dealing with their own haunts and having to do that. So I was like, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with this and created Haunters Against Hate. And with the sale of T-shirts and my website and going to haunt conventions and going to haunts themselves, I started raising money for LGBT youth organizations across the U.S. So that's what okay. I've been doing for the past four, four and a half years now. Do you, and I realize this kind of puts you on the spot, so it's okay if you don't know offhand what the round number is for donations? Uh, so far, I'm do? approximating 30000 Nice. Yep. Has been nice. And... One big thing that happened last year is, you know, I was raising funds and I was going through my liner design, but now Haunters Against Hate is officially a nonprofit corporation. Yeah. Oh, that's great. right. I remember that. Yeah. And the, the paperwork is just because of COVID, everything's delayed, but the paperwork is in to become a official 501c3. So that's in process. Yes. That is very impressive. Good yes. God. A lot of work. A lot of work to do that. Mm-hmm. But I felt it was something that had to be done because yeah. once that is done, I can expect donations as well now. Where Very everything wonderful. was the, the money that I was raising was through product. Mm -hmm. so. Very cool. Yeah, very I'm, exciting. I'm, yeah, gosh, I, it's, and it's weird to think that it's it's been. Like we are, we just talked. We were just talking about like when was the last? I know when you were last on here, and like oh, that was three, almost three. Well, a little less than three years ago, and it has grown so much since then. It it's has. just kind of amazing. Um, you have, and I'm I'm going on my personal memory. I didn't look this up. There are four 
books are five. There are now six. Are more. Six. Okay. <laughs> there was there, a number. There, there was are a number. Five volumes. Five volumes. Uh, one, two, three. Volume four was dedicated to black haunters in the industry. Mm-hmm. Volume six that just came out is LGBT haunters. And then there was a separate book of clowns. Oh, that's right. I I don't know why, but I forgot the clowns one. Um, uh, I don't know uh, why. <laughs> I'll have to just make skip sure to your send mind. you one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, but no. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so the so you were at first. I'm just kind of you were at first kind of making money through the sale of the shirts and um, the books and things like that. Right. And now that you will eventually, you know, eventually, you know become a 501c3 you can get donations you yes can... actually i can get donations now that i'm a non-profit nice but technically it could be, it's taxable until you become 501c3 oh that's right okay uh, okay very awesome like i'm just yeah. i'm i'm very it's just i'm i'm impressed by that because it's just it well means... thank you i appreciate it yeah. I mean, at this point i'm drinking eye cream from the stress <laughs> <laughs> It's like let me go. Let me run to Home Depot and get some Benjamin Moore paint to put on my face now. Calm down. <laughs> exactly. Like, we, gotta get, we gotta fix this. I mean, it, it, can we? Can we? Can we just like put shellac and just like pull the face back? And just like make it just permanent. <laughs> have, have enough Botox that when I smile, my legs snap open. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There we go. But yay. Congrats on that. And Thank you're you. now. And I think you mentioned, I mean, part of the show. I mean, Gary, if you're going to kind of keep going. Go ahead. Well, no, so uh, one of the things that you've developed, um, which I'll be quite honest, I'm not surprised by. Um, and it's because of your creativity and the fact that you've taken HAH on the road um, and gone to various. Um, conventions for the haunting industry uh you uh I, I honestly i'm just gonna go on a limb and say this i think paul that if there's anyone to blame it's adam rodriguez route um because i feel like he's rubbed off on you in, in one specific way and that's the <laughs> insanity of hosting an event <laughs> well um yes <laughs> I can't, I, that's all I guess. Well, and and consider also, I'm one of the co-producers for World Bear Weekend. Yes. Well, <laughs> I wasn't going to try to like put all that out there, but I was like, oh, um, but please do. Why not? <laughs> well, I mean, this kind of reminds me of when uh, when Adam was working on um, North American Bear, and then he's like, he announces he's going to do this other thing, and I was like. What are you like? Like you really like the pain? Like seriously? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank. I have to be honest. Thankfully, Adam's been helping me with that. You know, the hotel and all that portion of it because I I needed assistance with that, and he jumped out right away and said, "I'll help you, no problem." No, hey. I was like, "Thank you, I appreciate that," because you know I can't stop the twitch in my left eye right now. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I, I, I can't. <laughs> I can, I know that this is going to be a, when, so let's get the details out of the way. Right, right. So when, where, like, is okay. planned. It's Haunters Against Hate, the event. That is what I am calling it because there are so many conventions out there. And I mean, if you want to say it's a convention, you could say it's a convention, but I'm looking at it more as a fundraising event. Okay. So mm-hmm. I will call it like a three-day event. And it is happening July 30th through August 1st. Uh-huh. In Louisville, Kentucky. And uh-huh. I, I picked those dates because I feel at that point, hopefully, God willing, most people, if not all people, will be vaccinated by then against uh-huh. COVID. Um, yeah. If if we still had the previous administration in power, I would have probably not pursued this. But with uh-huh. Biden being elected, I have more faith that things will okay. move forward. Good way to think about it. Yes. And I think, um, oh gosh. So, yeah, you're thinking late July, like late summer or mid yes. summer? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mid summer. Late summer. Yeah. Mid summer. Yeah. Mid summer. That's um, another horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I know. <laughs> um, and hey, um, now you've given me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you just you had a shirt based on that theme, right? I did. <laughs> yes. Have you seen the film? I have not. Um, okay. The concept of people dancing around a pole with flowers in their hair wasn't really appealing in the first like part of the marketing campaign, and then when I found out it was like this twisted horror concept, like yes. you know whatever, I was like, um, no, like, <laughs> like I'm just not a fan. The concept of like these movies, you know, Hostel, Midsommar, whatever, where you know, no offense, ignorant white Americans travel abroad and get murdered is just really <laughs> kind of not my thing. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Well, there, I, it's like I shouldn't pursue Midsummer because the whole concept or one of the things that happens in it and uh, well, it's when you get to a certain age in this in this cult or whatever it is, right. you pretty much have to sacrifice yourself by jumping off a cliff. Yeah. And they show it. Oh, of course they do. And I'm like, at my age, I'd probably be the first one pushed off the cliff at the convention. Then, so. <laughs> no. We're, we're yeah, no. That. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I figured yeah. midsummer would be a good time, especially with yeah. the vaccine rollout and where you see more mm -hmm. people are getting vaccinated now. In fact, I got my first shot yesterday mm, and yay. the woman told me that they had planned a thousand people yesterday oh, to get wow. their shots. That's so great. Yeah. Waiting. I'm I'm waiting patiently um for mine. I will own. I know you're in Kentucky. Um, Kentucky seems to have some of their shit together, surprisingly. I don't know how it's because of our great go our governor is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> and our governors. Um, but <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. But it was it's it's very is a I think it's a very good idea to wait a little bit. And I think you also have like potential uh, contingency plan if you need to. Correct. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, you the standard COVID precautions will be in place and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And God forbid something happens where, you know, everyone starts turning into mutant house flies or something. <laughs> the, now, you know, that you just, would be... You just rescheduled, uh, rescheduled the event for a future time, like a yes. lot of people did for 2020. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, wow. it's exciting. Um, so far, I mean, already within the first month of announcing half of the vendor booths are already rented which is great oh nice yeah so I'm yeah. Glad. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the schedule for the the three days um if let's and i guess you could talk about both versions like whether uh or a version i guess if it's in person being someone who hasn't been to one before my presumption is there's going to be some type of like set hours agenda activities things of that nature yes somehow. um still working on everything but as it stands right now it's going to be like a horror con where you have the horror vendors <clears throat> selling their merchandise artwork and stuff like that some of the boots are going to have been rented by haunt that are in the area so you know they'll mm -hmm. have their actors there and they'll be promoting their haunted houses um and then i have 10 boots reserved for lgbt organizations that want to their organization so right now for example i have just us has reserved a booth and they're based out of nashville tennessee i have pcso pride community services organization that's based out of lexington i'm waiting to hear from louisville youth group and i also reached out to dreams of hope which is located in pittsburgh mm -hmm. which wow. i just donated to so i i have the feelers out to get more of those people in so i wanted a combo of horror haunts lgbt um, I'm also working on a couple of celebrities. I'm not pushing that too much, mm -hmm. but I want to have a few if possible. Um, and there are seminars already starting with, I'm going to be hosting a panel about LGBT and the haunt community because there's been a lot of issues lately in the haunt. Industry. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. one just flared up recently within the past week. Um, mm about trans people and it's been really yeah. unpleasant really unpleasant yes yeah. yeah i've been following I, you I on panel um, about that there's going to be panels about makeup and 
you know, special effects in the haunted history and stuff like that, which will be a lot of fun. So, the idea. yeah, Make it's it, fun. Finger, fingers crossed, and I think it's going to happen. But do you remember the TV show Face Off that was on Sci Fi? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the makeup artists will be probably coming to the event. Ooh. <laughs> Pretty exciting. <laughs> that sounds yeah. fun. This yeah, sounds, it, it sounds fun. Unique, and, 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 different. Yeah, and unique and different and potentially and also informative. And um, I know you're, it's going to be a fundraiser. So, I, you know, it, I think that's just going to be get all the more interesting and, and intriguing. And um, again, what was the word I was thinking of? Um, oh, freaky. That's the word I was thinking of. Yeah, I, I have a feeling it's going to be a little freaky, which is fine. That's, you know, cool. Like, if you go to any con, <laughs> like, there's, well, there's bound to be some sort of freakiness to it. Meaning, and, I'm and not the, time, thing, I'm just... the thing I'm pushing yeah. and I really like and it's really taken off is the fact that a lot of the haunters that have been in all the books, you know, a lot of them are signing on to come to the event and they're going to dress up as their characters that they were in, that they were in the books. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So basically, you know, the Haunters Against Tate booth, I'll be selling all the volumes. And it's almost like these Haunters have now become celebrities. So you can get them to autograph your books. Oh. So it's a playbill or a yearbook. And yes. I'm having special lanyards made up for the actors with a color of each volume. And I will hope hole punch what the color to coincide with what book they're in. So it makes it easier, nice. you know, like, oh my God, that one has a lanyard, they're in volume three, you know, so. Nice. Yeah, it's like a scavenger right now, hunt. Currently, I already have 54 of the actors that have registered that, for the convention or the event. That's, that's so cool. I yeah, that, it really yeah. is. I'm really excited about that. And I'm having... I'm having some awards given out at the event. I'm going to be presenting a Haunters Against Hate of the Haunter of the Year Award for a Haunter mm. that hate last year. Um, and that person's already been selected for what they did. I mean, I can tell you they, they're they based out of Wisconsin because they know they're getting the award. And ah. they have Westboro Baptist Church type group protesting outside their haunt. And they went out there in full character and stood out there ringing a cowbell to drown them out and stood against <laughs> them. And I sent them a banner and the following week they showed up again and they, this haunter stood out there with the banner in front of them and drowned them out until they finally left. I mean, stood completely up to them. So, oh, that's yeah, so... completely well worth the, the award for what yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. So good. So, Looking over on the the website, which just for everybody, it'll be included in our show notes and stuff, but it's hahtheevent.com. Correct. Uh, And looking over, so in theory, I don't know if anybody has, you might have that data, Paul, but um, if you've been collecting the books, if you have all the books, theoretically, they're somewhat represented from every single volume, that'd that'd be a lot to carry. I'm just thinking. Yeah, that would. I, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get little bags for people to have. <laughs> Do you need like a little shopping cart like from Target? <laughs> I mean, you don't find that. Uh, but but it's with some places a... uh, uh, that uh, actually like banning plastic bags where you have to like encouraging people to bring their own totes to, to, to grocery shopping. Uh, right. Tote bags. Or a thing. Yeah. True. That you know, I was just thinking, oh, for merchandise. Sure, why not? <laughs> Add something else. <laughs> yeah, that's and like his and if you need time. one, you could get go one at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, let, let me just add another merchandise item to the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, so here, I'm going to throw this out there as an idea. Sure, why not? Throw anything out. <laughs> No, 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 no. So, um, because uh, Drew and I used to go to a food and wine show in Cleveland uh, for a number of years. They haven't had it for a few years. They're reorganizing. I say air quotes because I don't know what the fuck that means. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen ever again, but all right. Um, 
But interestingly, at that, because it was set up kind of like an open hall convention style um, where you walked around all these booths, one thing I did like is that they had a station where you could take your things and they would hold on to it for you, like give you a ticket number or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when you were done at the end of the day uh, or, you know, you would come and collect your stuff. Um, they also expanded it and had gift wrapping and shipping and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that's a lot of stuff. But I was just gift thinking. Wrapping. Gift wrapping. Uh-huh. Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying the gift wrapping, but I'm just thinking the concept of kind of like a coat check, but like. A yeah, place like Disneyland could... does. If you buy stuff at Disneyland, you could check right. it and they bring it to the main gate for you when you leave. I'm thinking like, because if I had to carry six books around in a backpack. And if I might be trying to cosplay as some character, I could find that a little challenging. So, um, okay, let me I, let me let me write down. I need a hat check girl that looks like a zombie. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get right on. Hey, Pennywise, can you store these in the sewer? <laughs> no, really. Well, that could be a kind of thematically fun, but you know, I don't it's know not what that idea at all. Well, I don't know what the space is like that you're going to have. And if you have the square footage, then obviously it's that's one aspect if you have the personnel and some other things. But you never know. I mean, maybe a, a, an organization that's you know willing to um, participate would be willing to take that on as a task mm -hmm. in and of itself as a, as a sub-project. You know? So instead of having a booth, maybe like they man this thing or I don't know. Anyways, yeah. sorry. I brainstorming at spitball. Against no, this. that's fine. Oh. No, please. It, it's all about like welcoming ideas and concepts and everything and so I I am not I'm very welcoming to all that suggestions. The the other thing I forgot to mention the other award is going to be a memorial award Ooh. for a haunter uh, that was very popular in Illinois and he was part of Zombie Army Productions, which is a big group that you know they're the actors are in Statesville Haunted Prison, uh, Hell's Gate, it, these huge haunts, and he passed away last year unfortunately. Um, from complications from a surgery. Mm -hmm. And so I'm having a memorial award. He's in two of the books. And oh, wow. it's going to be called the Jesse McDonald HAH Memorial Award. And I I even got his mother is going to fly in to present the award to the person winning it. Aww. Which is really cool. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm sure it's going to be very emotional. And mm -hmm. because... And I, I doubt she'll be listening to this podcast, but the haunters at Zombie Army, this this Jesse who passed away, he was a big clown and he would carry around a bat. And they had a bat and it's been autographed by every single actor and then, you know, she'll act or whatever so they won't rub off and they're going to surprise his mother with the bat at my convention. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, really cool. Really cool. It's so awesome, but you need the full context to understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going to a going to a haunt event about hate, where they give a bat that is typically used in a whole other concept, but in this <laughs> one, it's meant to memorialize. Anyway. Right, right. It's, yeah, let's just twist everything, right? I mean, it isn't is that new. what haunters do? It's just twist everything yes exactly i mean i don't know if you saw but adam myself jack henkel and two two other guys we're going to be on stage doing our spice bears routine so, and we're going to do a lip sync to wannabe <laughs> because we each have our own names you know like they called me old spice <laughs> and adam is extra spice you know? no right. he's so much spice that's what we call so him much <laughs> spice. and and a lot of the you know i'm working with one of the drag performers in louisville and we're probably going to do a couple of drag shows at the event and oh, one of the haunts in louisville is talking about opening their haunt on saturday night to have people oh, if they oh. want to just walk through you know it's going to be too hot to actually have actors in the haunt Oh yeah, but a walkthrough or something like that, and then have an outdoor party afterwards. So. Oh, that sounds fun. That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah, I am all for an open, well lit haunt. Like, let's just let's just let's just do. <laughs> wait, wait, but, but there's more. 
operators are standing by. <laughs> because I petitioned or sanctioned, not sanctioned, what am I trying to say? I There's going to be 3,000 square feet that I've reserved aside that is going to be a walkthrough haunted house at the event. Oh, my. Now, uh, oh. So, okay, so here's what I was about to say. If you have a haunt at the event, I think it could be fun. I, however, am the one that's more intrigued about how the magic happens. So if there was like an exclusive extra paid premium tour where you get to see it during the daylight behind the scenes and how things happen, you know, regarding like electric eyes, you know, and the piston, you know, gas and and I'm, you know, talking out my ass, obviously, but just like I always find it interesting to see that kind of stuff, the behind the scenes of right. what makes the things happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I could see David being interested in that because it's not the actual haunt scary part. Right, of right. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the biggest I, I, and, and, is the heat. Yeah, yeah, that I could see being a thing. And I can understand that and respect that. I know I'm kind of like Gary's right. Like one of the things I would like, I am don't don't scare me. Like, please don't. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but I love knowing like how things are done. Right. Like, I I'm intrigued by like the makeup and those kind of things. That's like I'm going like that would be my thing because I would love to know how they do the things that they do. Cause some of like, I've seen some pictures and I've seen some of the pictures in the book and I'm just like, I, I, I'm terrified, but I'm also like, what did you do to do that? What type on of makeup did you use for that? Did you? <laughs> yeah. Was there something well, hey, involved? I, uh, one of the booths has been rented by this makeup artist and she does once every weekend since the COVID hit, it's called quarantine makeup, and she put, does different faces. But her character's oh, name yeah. is Lucy Fur. <laughs> <laughs> and she Bravo. goes to conventions dressed as this red demon, and she's amazing. And she's yeah. going to boot there, and she's going to do makeup on people and everything like that. Pretty cool. Like, yeah. like last night, she did a makeup on her page she did the pale man from pan's labyrinth the one with the eyes in his hands oh and oh tonight she's okay. doing a cheeseburger so go figure <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh, but nothing yeah. like effects makeup so, yeah <laughs> so there's going to be yeah, okay. there's, and once again if i you know the face off artist and stuff like that so there's definitely going to be makeup demos going on and i know people love that yeah, I'm. I'm big. I, that would be a big thing. That would. I. That would be for me. What would prompt me to be like? Let's let's check it out because. Well, good. Come on that, down, and I'll put you through the three thousand square foot walk through haunted house at the haunts that are the haunts that are renting boots are. I think getting together to create this haunted house and have actors in there. I I think Damon is the Travis Willingham of this show. <laughs> I, I, I'm good with the the I, I'm good with the first part. I can I can I, I can I can I can skip it. I can I can skip I can skip the yeah. We can we can skip the the hot. We can skip the hot house. We, I, I I will I will I will admire it from afar. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, David. I mean, you know, if if you know, you could potentially go to one of the workshops. Like, you know, one of them is is uh, about haunt tricks. So once you go to that, you might, you know, feel more inclined to going into the haunt because you'll understand, you know, what what's being done where and when. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I also, another fun thing is I also, uh, who they've committed is both the Louisville and Lexington chapters of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Yay. We'll be at the event, which is great. And I'm happy about that, too, because, honestly, I, I'm a little concerned that there may be protesters. You just never know. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Because, I mean, both, both haunts, horror, and LGBT have their detractor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you never know. And the Sisters for Perpetual Indulgence live for that. Mm-hmm. And there are some... Especially in, in, I think even in Lexington for sure, if I'm remembering correctly, there are some 
um, sisters that kind of added that little edge of of the horror makeup and stuff on yes. there. So I can yes. see that Absolutely. going like I can. Oh, I oh my god! I I just I'm 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 loving that idea of yes. just like mm -hmm. like freaky like freaky zombie nuns like yeah. protest like like anti protest oh <laughs> yes there yeah the, there's especially one in Lexington sister Ken Tages yes that's yeah who I remember uh huh and she always does very very creepy horror makeup with the with the nun makeup combined so mm -hmm. and she's what like six three yes yeah so oh she'd, she'd be oh, right but... out there <laughs> Clacking away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love it. Exactly. There you go, Trump dead. <laughs> so it'll be interesting seeing like zombie nuns next to like, you know, vampires and you know, but the, the bottom line is I just want to make sure everyone feels welcome and comfortable. So right. that's the key awesome. thing. You know, that come come however you want and be who you are. You know, because yeah. we're haunters against hate. So, yes. mm -hmm. I, I'm intrigued. I mean, it, it's a big undertaking. There's no denying that. It's like, let's just add something else to the plate. Mm -hmm. But if it's for a good cause and everything. And I, and I have a lot of people that are willing to help me and have jumped on board to say, you know, I'll handle this. I, I'm not taking the whole thing on by myself. It's like I'm willing to dole out responsibilities to people and say you handle this portion of it you handle this portion of it so good 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 <clears throat> good and that is always a good thing to to do and learn um i know i know when this was sort of starting it was very much kind of a you and yes. i i'm glad that you are are i, I would say growth but like but like here the idea of like it doesn't always have to be just one person. It can no, be and it can't people. be. It just can't be. Yeah, it can't. And this, this especially, an event like this, I'm sure Gary understands um, yeah. that events like this take many people juggling um, many plates. So, yeah, yeah. And, and and I want to somehow be able to enjoy some of it. I'm sure I'm going to be oh, running yeah. around like a chicken without a head. Now, Gary, how well does that work? <laughs> how, well, how, how well does it work to be a decapitated chicken? Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, it's more of the organizer, the, the main organizer of the event, getting time to enjoy the event. Oh, no, I think it's easier to talk about the decapitated chicken. Part <laughs> because, because you have no braid left, but the body just keeps going. Well, I mean, and, and and let's just let's just make it worse on myself because three weeks after my event is World Bear Weekend. Oh, mama! Oh, <laughs> but, uh, oh here's the thing: you're gonna find your own event that, like you've you've basically birthed and created from from inception and stuff, is a lot more um, emotional uh, and spiritual taxing on you, challenging. I should say, not taxing. So when you get a couple weeks down the road to the other event, you're just helping with that. Yeah. It's like, I think, I think you're going you're gonna to be like, that weekend, you're going to be like, oh, this is a breeze. Is I'm nothing. just, I'm just going to sit there in an Elvis outfit and sit in the lobby because it's in Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> Someone bring me a, you know, banana and peanut butter bacon sandwich and I'll be happy. <laughs> you know? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would, to me, I'm like, oh, you got them in the right order. You get yours out of the way first, the one that's, yeah. like, the most, like, stressful or whatever, and then you go to the other one. The other one, you feel like you're going to be coasting. You'd be like, oh, right. okay. <laughs> Even though, at that one, I have my amazing race game, so that I'm already Ooh. having to work on. <laughs> yeah, That'll it'll be, be a nothing. breeze, you're right. It'll be a breeze compared to, like, oh, I'm just putting on a whole event the whole weekend. Is, is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Well, no, there's, there is, I think distinctly there is a big difference between, you know, like bit creating something, you know, and building it and, and all that. I don't, I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I mean, you really have a different investment in it than when you're um, assisting yeah. Um, yeah. others, whether it's a group collective dream or other person's dream and you're in support of them. It's just different. Right. Uh, yeah. 
kind of thing. So I, I think, you know, will will the next event be, you know, have some stress to it? Absolutely. Every event has stress to it. But mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> the fact that it's not your event, um, I think will be the... <laughs> well, and, and with World Bear, you know, my biggest contribution being co-producers, you know, I handle all the advertising and artwork. So generally by the time the convention arrives, all of that's done. You remind that me of part. somebody I know dearly um, who was so polite to me to tell me because they used to be involved in an event and they're like oh i took care of all of this until the week of the event and i went and then what'd you do and they're like and then i handed it over and then i was done <laughs> <laughs> they were like, and they were like and you know they were they were part of the event committee the staff they were you know walkie talkie on call and all that they're like but i no longer had responsibility there i thought i've never forgotten how strategic that was like they put all the work in mm-hmm. like 95 to 98 percent of the work is done up until the week of the event and then they pass it off to another person mm-hmm. because it has been collected and perfected and and you know and, right. a hand yeah. and then they become free to do other things do um, you think adam's gonna let me be free <laughs> Well, I didn't say that Good that was going to happen, but conceptually, I've never forgotten the like the the in, the interest of that. So I'm the, like, there's the, the, last, the last one. I I mean, because I'm you know me with my demented sense of humor. Um, they had me get on stage to give the memor- in memoriam section of the thing, and I told Adam because it was Victor who had passed away and someone else who had passed away, and I told Adam what I wanted to do was just get up on stage and go, hello, they're dead, and just walk off the stage. <laughs> and just have everyone in the audience go, whoa! I just, but wouldn't that oh. be me? I, that would be so me. <laughs> Adam said he would have laughed his ass off. Well, and I, so I, right, and, and that's the part is, if and, and this is the thing that I learned personally, if people aren't in on the joke, then it's not funny. Right. And that, and that becomes a challenge because in year 10, um, for the anniversary of the event that I've put on, we did a comedy roast of me. Because mm-hmm. everybody thought that was going to be hysterical. Well, actually, the feedback afterwards came back. I don't know who this person is or why we should find this funny. And I was like, oh, if you're doing the <laughs> event, like, right, if, if you've never been before, you have no clue what the hell's going on. You don't understand why this person and this, like, this is your life a la comedy roast. Like, these people from across parts of your life are talking about you and telling personal stories and embarrassing you. And how funny it is, like, you wouldn't, none of that would make sense. You'd be like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't understand what it is. So it's it's taught it taught me some interesting stuff about how, like, you may think a certain thing, but that's not necessarily everybody's, you know. Right, <laughs> right cup of tea when it comes to that but, so i can see you know. where adam would find it funny i i could see the humor in it having known victor he probably would have found it funny too like right right but if if you're not on the inner circle i could see where people would be like <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. which only would make me laugh even more <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that everybody feels very uncomfortable right right exactly it's one of the things where you kind of like you could do that you could you could go on stage they're dead and then walk off stage then like give it a beat then come back on and explain the joke just be like right right well and there's 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 a line in aliens the second film where uh, Sigourney Weaver's character is talking to the little girl Newt, and you know everyone's pumping her about her parents. And she, at one point, she finally goes, "They're dead, all right." <laughs> and that's what I wanted to do. They're dead, all right. <laughs> it's like, what do you? I, mm. <laughs> you have to have a sense of humor about it. You just have to. Mm. Sometimes it is nice. <sighs> yeah, well. maybe I should do that at my event then for the memorial <laughs> road. He's gentle, right? <laughs> Here's the award. <laughs> Take it. You can't Go. write when his mother's on stage. He's dead. <laughs> I know. Okay. I'm demented. <laughs> no, no. I'm thinking about how you recover from that, though. Like, how do you. 
like how do you go back for all the people that don't that are horrified? I like, know. How do you, well, how of course, I mean, I'm so bad because she tells she told me she's like, you know, I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm like, first thing I'm like, shit, now I have to get a ramp. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I. I... It's yeah. one of those things that you have to like. The comedy of it is is the more intriguing part. I mean, how do you? Because I'd be more concerned about course correcting for the trauma you're going to cause other people, because <laughs> because they just don't understand the humor, <laughs> right, or, right. or conceptually for the briefest moment, you know, get whatever that is. Like I can see. I... And then the other thing I thought is like, okay, she's in a wheelchair. Do I dress up like Betty Davis and whatever happened to Baby Jane? Well, and wheel see, her up on stage. You're not the only one because I thought of that, but I was thinking of that because of you. I was like, <laughs> I was like, will Paul be willing to? Anyways, <laughs> right? Have her come up on stage where she's holding like a platter with a rat on it or something, <laughs> and the award. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, interesting. Uh, and, and then when they 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 come to present her uh, with the bat, they're actually coming up, and and someone has the bat and like tapping it on their shoulder. Yes, <laughs> like the warriors. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like Whoa. like, hey, <laughs> how are you doing? We want to give you this bat. <laughs> right. Who's gonna push her off the stage now? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. You just get her in on the joke, being like, okay, here, here's, here's the staging. Here's your motivation. Right. They're gonna come up. They're gonna have. They're gonna have a bat. Bat. They're gonna be looking like they're gonna be threatening it with you with, with that. Don't worry. They're not actually going to. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. So if people want to see how this turns out, um, they can go online right now. It's live. Uh, you can go to hahtheevent.com. Um, and there's a nice big oval that says click here to order tickets. Yes. Um, and then it takes you over to Eventbrite. So you've got a couple of different options for folks to choose from from the looks of it. Yes. Um, so individual day passes yes. as well as a whole weekend pass. Weekend, and then a VIP pass. Uh, VIP all pass. Kinds of, all kinds of goodies mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Including the t-shirt for the event itself. And you get in one hour before the event opens to the public, general public, and stuff like that. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Who does it? Who doesn't want an early access? That's right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they can go through the haunt by themselves. <laughs> no, Damon, no, I don't think so. Still not appealing to him. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, no. Uh, so in a way, it's it's like a horror convention merged with an LGBT festival. Yeah. No. I mean, what more would you want? Right, exactly. And and think about it. When you like think a lot of the actors ideal. in the, in the haunt industry are LGBTQ. I mean, it's it, in its own way, it's a form of theater. Mm -hmm. It really so, is. Yeah, so. it is. Um, uh, for sure. Like theater, art. Yes. Uh, like it, it, those kind of, it definitely gives me those vibes. It's performance. It's, yes. it's, 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 and adding on to that, like adding the um, LGBT element to it, it's just kind of, it kind of almost goes hand in hand. It's the surprising factor, I think, you know, years ago when you, when this kind of started, knowing, you know, the people you, I would say like the people you would consider weird like being targeted or feeling you know that they don't belong and then coming into and doing these things and finding something that they're where their creative juices can flow and they can do these fun things and the creepy weird demented twisted love that they they have and sharing it with with other people like it's that kind of feeling that i get and and again it's not my cup of tea or orange juice or lemonade or sweet tea, anything. It's, it's, it's of, not my thing. Cup of beverage of your choice. Yeah, but it, I enjoy, I, I, I get where, from, from a, a theatrical standpoint, I get why it's people do it and love doing it. 
Yes. And that's part that's the thing that I think I could enjoy. Like mm-hmm. I can enjoy that because it, I see, like I, you know, again, I, I've, I've read the pages, I've seen some of the things that you have in the books, and I've listened to these stories and them telling them, telling the people that are in this doing what they're doing, and I'm, I'm getting it. I get mm-hmm. why, mm-hmm. I get why they do it, and the joy that it brings to them. Yes. Um, and yeah, there is a joy in scaring the fuck out of people. Like let's let's be honest about it. Oh like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, having having scared at a haunt for several years, there is some kind of like adrenaline rush when you you know have someone piss their pants. <laughs> <laughs> someone has a reaction. Like, well, I and I've had that happen. I've had mm-hmm. that happen when I was working at Nightmare in Edgewood when they they built a section. Uh, with real phobias. I came up with an idea to have a real phobia. So one of the mm. rooms was real snakes. Oh, Jesus. No. Yes. Okay. And when people <laughs> approved, we'd have the snakes in the cages, but it was very dark. And I was underneath the cages so people couldn't see me. And we were a touch haunt. So as they were walking, I would grab their legs. Oh. Oh. And I did oh. have one woman, when I grabbed her legs, said, Oh my God, I'm peeing. <laughs> <laughs> And to me, that was like winning an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gary rolling the eyes, but I, I get no, that. that's because I'm like, but that's not even in a shower. It's not technically, you li- anyways. <laughs> it's like, I like to thank the Academy for making this woman piss her pants. <laughs> yeah. But well, it's an adrenaline good. rush, and it's like, then you want to like get more people to pee their pants. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely an adrenaline so, rush getting someone a group to scream and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting. This is the and, very first Hunters Against Hate uh, 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 event uh, niche productions. Yeah, so, sorry, responding to the chat. Oh, oh, yeah. Someone was asking if this is a you know an annual event. Um, you know, they hadn't necessarily heard of it before, so Jeff was clarifying it's the first the first one, the the birthing. You're gonna yeah. be a parent, Paul. <laughs> You're gonna bring into the world an event. Rosemary's baby part two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm I'm excited about it. I'm hopeful. I there's a lot of enthusiasm about it from the haunters. They're very excited about it. So mm-hmm. Because I want I, I want the haunters to recognize that at this event they are the celebrities. You know, for mm-hmm. all the hard work that they do. Where where you get these other horror conventions and they're filled with very famous celebrities. And people mm-hmm. go to get their autographs and stuff. And I and that's fine and that's dandy and I, I appreciate that. I mean I myself like doing it. But for my convention, I think the actors are more important from the haunts. Mm-hmm. I want them to be recognized for their contribution to the haunt community, where a lot of times it's the haunt owners that are recognized and stuff. No, the actors need to be recognized because without them, you have nothing. Too true. So. And, I, and I think that's pretty awesome, Paul. I would say uh, what would be cool is to have like one celebrity, I guess, from horror or whatever that the hunt industry looks up to or likes. Mm-hmm. If they were to be a keynote type of like celebrity, so it's not so much, you know, a whole um like you're not repeating what other haunts necessarily have. Um mm-hmm. but I was just thinking about how uh someone come out with a new book recently that apparently I let you know about on unbeknownst to me um <laughs> when i shared on facebook i was like so i imagine you already pre-ordered this <laughs> um here's and the thing were... and i would love to get that celebrity but i have a feeling the price would be exorbitant right and i don't want that taking away from the profits that could be donated fair. um fair. i am talking to a celebrity that i've become actually quite good friends with who wrote the introduction uh-huh. for my volume five yeah. Oh, okay. And she has said, barring that, you know, the summer she spends with her family, like a certain, like two or three weeks, and it's the only time the family gets together. And if it doesn't conflict with that, and with COVID, that I am all, she is all mine. So, oh, good, fingers good, crossed. Good. Fingers crossed. In fact, ironically, while we've been chatting, I got a text from her. So, oh, nice. Oh. Huh? Oh, you know, so and we'll see what be, happens. 
She is well. I I mean I don't mind. She's World Volume Five. She was the star of George Romero's Day of the Dead. Her name's Lori Cardill. So you know she has a following, a big cult following, because George Romero's zombie films are major, and I just adore her to pieces. So I we're working on it. We're working on it. And I yeah. Would, and I told her I said I would like to give her a legacy award because she has done so much to promote Haunters Against Hate for me on her social media. Mm-hmm. And it's been wonderful. So nice. nice. We will see. We will see. We shall see. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. Fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. That's all I can do is fingers crossed. You know, COVID. I'm hopefully COVID will be calmer, less of an impact. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, I, an and I really, truly feel confident about it. I really do, especially yeah. with the way. Biden has been rolling out the vaccine and his determination. So, yeah. hopeful. Fingers crossed. Exactly. Yeah. I, I will say that, um, you know, things are, are hopeful. Um, the recent announcements about the, you know, potential of the vaccine rollout, the things that are being handled. Because um, I know folks have been kind of talking to me about, like, you know, when do you think things are going to? And I was like, nobody knows for certain. No, of course. But not. there's. But the I think the thing that we've changed in 2021 is it feels like there's a plan. Yes. Like there's a concept of like, you know, a, a rollout and how that can happen. And, um, you know, like anything that just starts that, you know, it gets a little bumpy at the beginning, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and to me, that's, you know, sort of to be expected. And, and I think, you know, frustration is, is completely understandable um, because everybody, you know, it's about a supply and demand issue. So many people are demanding it. There's just not enough supply at the right. moment. So, but that like will get handled in the near future, you know, mm-hmm. and addressed in that, you know, it'll be more available. And um, I don't know if we'll get quite to the point where it's kind of like you can go anywhere for eggs that you can go anywhere to get a COVID vaccination shot, but who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that'll that'll really uh, make improvements, I think, for for the, right. the latter part of this year. And so. And do I think COVID will go away? No, I think it'll become ultimately something like the flu. You know, where you get your shot and stuff and, you know, just be careful. And, you know, hopefully with the shots, people won't be hospitalized and won't die. But the thing is, getting people, some people will not refuse, you know, they'll refuse to take the vaccine no matter what. You know, but what are you going to do? You Mm -hmm. can't. There's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll see. We'll see. We'll we'll see. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Like I said, if I turn into a big house fly, so be it. But at least I got vaccinated. We'll 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 enjoy it when you turn into a, a uh, giant fly, uh, a la yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> it'll cause my it'll cause my event to have a lot of buzz. Did I touch? Wait, you can't see my hand. There we go. <laughs> Gotta get in frame. Just hand. Anyway. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. On that note. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure there's going to be glitches and bumps, like you said, along the way with, you know, because it's the first event of its kind. You know. mm-hmm. But I just have to learn to roll with it and not panic. Mm-hmm. That's the key thing. Don't panic. So yeah, uh, uh, make sure you've got your towel. Another <laughs> reference which has nothing to do with <laughs> things. Have my towel. I knew that was coming. Well, you what said don't I panic like? from g- g- the the the, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Make sure you have a towel. Yes, never travel without a towel. Anyways, anyway. I understood what you were saying. <laughs> I make okay. a reference that Gary now gets. Okay. I made like three references. Hey, I, I think only like I, one other person that got or something during this entire show. That's okay. That's I don't nice follow everything there. necessarily in the haunt world either. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the big thing right now is I'm trying to figure out how to do sponsorships and stuff and like tiers and all that and what, what people would get for that. That I have to work out in my head and stuff like that. I, I have no clue. So okay. that's my big oh, thing. Right? One step at a time. Right. Exactly. 
So folks do have the option currently to be able to get their general admission tickets. They can be for a weekend pass or for individual days, or you can do the VIP. Um, if you're not able to attend the event, if you want, there's also a t-shirt uh, specifically for the event that you could get. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and then if people are interested, they can just go to visit the website and then reach out to you, Paul, if they have questions about the event or Yes, activities. absolutely. And and also on the website, there's a special link for hotel rooms where the hotel is given Haunters Against Safety event a special room rate of 105 a night, which is not bad at all. So, you know, everything is now. And I, I will constantly be adding to the website as I get, you know, more Haunters on board, as more seminars happen, as more vendors hop on and stuff like that. So I'll constantly be adding to that. Okay. Ongoing. Well, we'd be happy to hear about uh, updates as things get closer to the event and, you know, do you have other big news that you want to let folks Absolutely. know about? I'll be more than happy. I'll, I'll let you know how much eye cream I use every day as it gets closer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, Paul, Paul bought the Costco chewable size. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's exciting, but, and it's, it's tough too, because I also have to balance that with my real work. Mm. So... Right. You know, it's not just haunters can say it. It's like I have a re regular job that I do. So your day job, right? Kind of like us. And I think that's one thing that people kind of forget about. Like that would be true about haunts. It would be true about like the, these convention events. People have a whole life. Like this yeah. is something that they do on the side. It's not very often that this is actually their whole income or you know, right. occupation right. or anything. In that case, mm -hmm. exactly. So. so. Yeah, it's a lot of balancing. Yep. Great. Well, it's been awesome having you on. Uh, we're going to wrap up with a little bit of closing here and some post-show. If uh, Why don't we go ahead and run through the regular stuff, Jeff, and then we'll talk about getting in touch in with folks. Yeah, so there, there's plenty of ways to contact us, uh, and we can, can also push you in the right direction for Paul here. But uh, for us, you can go to our website, comesoutloud.com, where you can actually look up the previous episode that we had Paul on. On uh, episode 483. Um, that's, you can also shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail 361 C will talk. That's 361 265 8255. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, you can also join our Entourage chat where you can chat about haunty things or your Valentine's Day woes uh, over at uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we plan to do these shows by going to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various uh, uh, COL accoutrements, like uh, the shirt that Gary is, shirt and hat that Gary is wearing, because I think he's the only one who's currently wearing the COL merchandise right now. Mm. That's over at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or uh, just send us a little cash at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, plenty of other places that they, whatever, however you catch your pods, you can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box set, box puppy, box cut, box something or other. And also Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch for some B and D and mostly WoW gaming. Although I might do Starview. Stardew this week. Maybe. Okay. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. Paul, if they would like to get in touch with you about Haunters Against Hate, the or organization, or the event itself, where would they uh, get in touch with you? Okay, you can go to hauntersagainsthate.com, mm -hmm. um, or you can go for the event, H-A-H, theevent.com. If you go to hauntersagainsthate.com, there's a contact page, and you could... You, if you have any questions and send them to me, there's a link there. So, Paul at hauntersagainsthate.com. Very cool. <laughs> there you go. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs>